everyone. Welcome to another edition of Hard Copy, the program where we bring you the people behind the news. I'm Maupe Ogun. Today, we're turning the light on human trafficking. The Global Slavery Index estimates that about 45 million people around the world are living in slavery and over 700,000 persons are trafficked across various international borders annually. It's difficult to say what percentages of these numbers are Nigerians. But Nigeria today is a known source, a transit, and destination country for women and children subjected to trafficking in persons, including forced labor and forced prostitution. Now, just last year, the International Organization for Migration warned that the movement of Nigerian women to Italy by boat was reaching crisis levels because from January to June last year alone, an estimated 4,000 Nigerian women were said to have been rescued on the high sea, a figure which doubles that of 2014. Now, all of this draw attention to the work of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, as NAPTIP, an agency which has been in existence now for 14 years. Tonight, I speak with the Director General, Julie Okadonli, asking her if the agency is really capable of putting a stop to the trafficking of persons in Nigeria. Well, Julie Okadonli, you're welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you very much. Now, when one takes a look at the scope of work that NAPTIP has to do, I mean, there's the local dimension, there's also the international dimension. Don't you think that these uh, the scopes are just too broad? Should you have more than one agency? No, not at all. I don't think the scope is too broad because NAPTIP does not work in isolation. We work with other law enforcement agencies. We work with the immigration services, the Nigerian police, the NDLA. Because if you look at um, trafficking in um, persons, as we call it, TIP, it involves different um, elements of, of crime. So we need to work and partner with these various LEAs in order to achieve our, our mandate. And that's exactly what NAPTIP does. Now, considering how, you know, multi-pronged the problem seems to be, what would you say your primary focus is as DG? My primary focus right now is to create awareness, sensitization, prevention. Because when you prevent this from occurring, then, of course, your job is like 80, 80 to 85 percent done. And then that is what we are trying to do now. We're trying to go just not on the state level, but even on the local government levels and involve every, every stakeholder in Nigeria and um, internationally as well. Prevention, is, you say, is your focus. You know, yeah. Some people might say that NAPTIP hasn't quite done well in that area, considering the fact that before now, uh, shortly after the, uh, will I say, the... Uh, the creation of NAPTIP and the, the laws empowering NAPTIP, there was a lot of awareness, you know, concerning uh, trafficking in persons. But it would seem that over the years, that has died down. Would you say that NAPTIP is getting complacent? I would not agree with you. Um, what I'll rather say is NAPTIP has probably been silent on its um, achievements, you know, over the last maybe two or three years. But um, I think NAPTIP has been doing a lot because every, every Thursday across the 10 zonal commands, we go out and we create awareness everywhere you can think of. We go to the motor parks, NAPTIP goes to, I mean, churches, mosques, and, you know, just about schools as well. And it's something they've been doing, you know, like all over the years. I think they've just been a little bit quiet. Maybe we've not been partnering enough with the media, which is one thing that we plan to do um, this year and going forward. Why would you say NAPTIP is quiet? Well, because, I mean, like you just said now, you, you think they've been complacent, maybe because you've not been hearing about NAPTIP, NAPTIP, NAPTIP everywhere. They probably have not been, you know, um, partnering more with the media, maybe, before I took over. Took over. So that, I think that's what makes a difference. Now, trafficking has both local and international dimensions. You say that uh, you're not... Um you're not overwhelmed by it, but you know, when you look at the problems, which would you say pose the greatest threat to Nigerians? Is it international dimensions when we're talking about uh, young women and girls being trafficked or even young men thinking that they are greener pastures over there? Or have you been looking more at the local problems, for instance, illegal maternity homes, illegal orphanages as well, which just exist for the purposes of selling babies and, or even the part that has to do with violence against persons? Well, I won't choose one over the other. I think both of them are equally problematic because there's a lot of people, when you talk about trafficking, people think of international trafficking. But a lot goes on here in Nigeria. There's so much trafficking going on here in Nigeria um, between states. 
Children are trafficked from, example, from Kwara State and taken to Lagos. Children are trafficked from Benue State and taken to other parts of the state. And the local trafficking involves more of children, which to me is even more disturbing because these are little children who are really uh, 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 vulnerable. And I mean, they are trafficked for, for labor, cheap labor. In the course of this cheap labor, most of them are abused by even those who are supposed to be who they are supposed to be working for, the husbands of those who they are supposed to be working for. And so this is quite problematic to me. So the international one as well is also problematic. Problematic in the sense that it's gone beyond sexual exploitation. Back in the days when people just go there, they exploited sexually, cheap labor, but it's gone beyond that. It's now, it's now extended to all um, organ harvesting, which is really, really worrisome because, I mean, you may, you may never come back alive anymore unlike before. So both of them have their, 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 their problem areas, and they're both very, very problematic and traumatic at the same time. The organ harvesting, is it happen, happening locally as well? Well, I, uh, most of the organ harvesting thing we hear happens internationally, but I want to believe that it also happens here. I want to believe that some people come here from various countries to harvest these organs and take them abroad. I, I want to believe that also Do you have happens. any proof to that? Well, I do not have any personal proof, but I want to believe that happens. And we'll investigate it. We plan to investigate that. That's just my thinking. And um, I was just having a chat with the investigation officers, and I told him that I want to believe, because when people talk about um, ritual, I don't think there's anything like ritual where they take parts, your organs, out of your body. I don't, I don't see how taking your heart or your liver or your kidney can, can, can translate to cash. I, I want to believe that when they say, oh, a child or a man or a woman was used for rituals, I want to believe there's someone somewhere who actually buys these organs and, and transports them abroad for, for an organ transplant or something. That's what I want to believe. But those are your suspicions. Yes. Well,